Yeah, let's do a uh, do a pre-show here. <sighs> Good afternoon, kids. <clears throat> this is your daily rants of Izzo. Oh no, man! Hi. Can you hear us? <laughs> hey, wait, wait a oh, second. Well. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hey, I, uh, I think I see Kyle over there. It's a story. I, I, I feel like I, that's. I think uh, I see Kyle over the there. Goal. See what I did there? Do you see? No, he's so upset that he had to leave the show already. Matt just felt like he just couldn't handle it. All right, kids, this is the rants of it. Nobody got that joke. Uh. Rants of his O show here. Just on tell Sp- people you're 29 every year. You're into the good stuff here. The Wait. good stuff's after 30. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, back in we were sold a lie back in high school. They're like, "These are the best years of our life." No, they're not. What? Gotta wait for him to put his headphones on. Is it? Is it your birthday, Scott? Penis test. Burn pit can't hear us today. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you fine. No? You can, yes. Oh, I don't think you can hear us. Yes, we I can. Can't hear any, I, I can't, can't hear anything. There, there you go. This is fucking ridiculous. Detected. There you go. Oh, my, you're uh, testing. Oh, there you he can is. hear me. <laughs> yeah, I heard you the entire time. You guys didn't hear me say, hey, I think I see Kyle over there? No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, is it your birthday, yeah. Scott? Next Wednesday, it's okay, my birthday. There you go. My birthday. We're going to do the show <laughs> nude. All right, kids, this is the Rants of Vizzo show here on Spreely Media. It's Wednesday. Burn Pit Podcast boys are sitting in. Today's show is brought to you. Who's it brought to you by? Uh, do you have thinning hair or dull, dry skin because of menopause? Have you been trying those powder collagens and not seeing any results? Well, Kickstart Collagen and Elastin products rev up by Radiance, visibly reduce fine lines and wrinkles, and they boost hydration for an all-out gorgeous skin with beauty focus, collagen. Our clinically proven collagen drink enhances your beauty with a combination of unique benefits that you simply can't find anywhere else. Made with zero artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners, visit www.angiezwick.com. Or email Angie uh, at Angie at uh, Angie'sWick.com for more information. There you go. If you're an old broad who's uh, going through menopause and you're like, damn, I need some collagen because my shit's done, gone haywire, get a hold of Angie'sWick.com. She's today's show sponsor. Don't forget to go check out Spreely.com where all things are spoken freely, including a free speech website. Numerous shows out there, like the Burn Pit Podcast, which you can catch every Monday live at 4 p.m. Eastern. But for right now, we're going to do the Rants of Izzo show here on Spreely TV, because that's what we came here to do. All right, sit tight, kids. Prepare yourself. The opinions of the host and guests on the show are exclusively just that, opinions. That means that they shouldn't be the cause of your state of being offended. Why does everybody get so butthurt? Okay, let's go. Ready, go! Sit down, shut up. And pay attention. This is the Rants of Izzo Show with your host, Dominic Izzo. From porn to politics, we touch every third rail we can find. You might want to put your headphones on so your mom can't hear this. It's been called the most entertaining 60 minutes on the internet, and it starts now. Let's do this. Good afternoon. This is the Rants of Izzo show here on Spreely TV. Thanks to those who joined the pre-show. We love that three minutes that we get with you. That's just more eventful than an average night with me to where I don't give a shit if she comes first. It's all about me. And if you don't care, go back to your fucking mother's place. All right, it's Wednesday. So uh, it is the Burn Pit Podcast, boys. Um, I figure we have to have the proper... Uh, opening entrance song for the the Burn Pit Boys whenever they come on. I mean, <clears throat> should we all stand at attention when we celebrate this glory? Listen. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I, oh man! I, you know that's not funny. I can't believe you. Oh my god! I, I thought about this. You know, we we are having what seems to be a rut of discussions with a certain topic lately, and I don't care because it's a topic that needs to right. be discussed. So if anybody has a problem with the content that we're having, I just don't tune in on Wednesdays. I really don't give a shit. But the other side of the coin is that um, I find humor in a lot of things. Uh, I, I watched some video or some post today, like by the New York Post, that talked about some nurses found a, a or di- dentists found a cancer patient's uh, diary, and they were caught on video, like laughing and mocking at what they read. And I'm like, dude, I don't give a shit. We used to make fun of dead kids. We used to make fun of uh, abuse victims. You name it. When we went back to roll call, because that's how we deal with the stress. So I don't give a shit. Uh, I find humor in everything. Um, so if I'm going to joke around by having, you know, you guys on and play the, 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 the Nazi marching song, I don't give a shit. These are, I'm so tired of everything having to be uptight and I just want to have conversations on things, uh, as they unfold because the world needs to be fucking educated as far as I'm concerned. It's uh, as simple as that. Um, that being said, let's jump into this. You sent a video that I want to watch, uh, together as a class and I'm going to pull this up and, um, well, before we do that, let's get some updates. You guys got anything going on new for the Burn Pit Podcast that everybody could watch live at Mondays at 4? Yeah, we're live Mondays at 4 o'clock on Spreely TV. Spreely can be found on Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick. Download the Freedom Hub app right to your phone or smart device. Go into the app store, type in Freedom Hub, all one word. Um, yeah, with uh, Mondays, we uh, get into uh, news of the day. We, we touch on news topics just like you do every uh Every day, Dominic, your show, Rants of Izzo's, uh, Monday through Friday at 1 o'clock. You can find us here every Wednesday at 1. Uh, but, you know, recently we had a discussion with a, a gentleman who wrote the uh, a book called The Analog Parent, uh, Raising Your Children in a Digital Age. Uh, we talked about the boomer generation. And then just this uh, last Monday was, two days ago, was my wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. So Matt and I did the show. And then I brought my wife on uh, at the end just to introduce everybody, uh, the audience, to her. Uh, it was our 12th wedding anniversary. That's so awesome. Been married for 12 I, years. What did you get out of the interview, guys, uh, when you talked about the generational raising differences? Because uh, I just, I, uh, Matt and I have talked about this where we both understand and value the uh, the need for negative reinforcement. Um, I, want, I just don't function on positive reinforcement, and I think that's my upbringing. My mother was a very cold woman, and there was no love and touches and hugs, and I, there was nothing. It was, you're not fucking good enough, okay, so strive harder. And I functioned very well at any work I went to. Um, I was an employer's wet dream, dude, because fucking they had an objective set out, and I did it because that was, you know, it was, I just like the brow beating. And, um, Recently getting back into wrestling coaching, I'm coaching 10-year-olds and younger, and I've had a talk with their parents going, listen, you guys don't know me. It's the first time I'm with your team. Are you okay with me kind of making your kid run laps if they don't behave? Or having your kid do push-ups or or snapping at, yo, they, they need it, they need it. The teaching to the weakest link, I think, is one of the worst things for fucking American society ever, and we see it in professions across the board. But what did you guys get away uh, from the takeaway from that conversation with the guest you had? Uh, well, a, a lot of it was some truth that, you know, one of our guests, who was a friend of mine, who's the best man at my wedding. Yeah, we had two We had two, we had two guests yeah. on. And he, he made the point that, now we were talking about the boomer generation, but he made, a, and we're all these negative things about the boomer generation. But he made the point that, you know, we're passing the buck on to the next generation and blaming them. And he, he was right. You know, if you look at the federal reserve creation and the passing of the federal reserve and, you know, things like that, was, the, income that? Tax, the federal reserve 1913. So that was the generation pri- prior, you know? So, you know, you can look at every generation and huge screw ups and, you know, lack of taking action or, or doing something about a horrible problem to where they have failed. So he was right. However, the, Boomer generation are now the top tier oldest generation in the country. Basically, I mean, you still have some survivors that are in their 90s or maybe hundreds. But when it comes to the the highest demographic and the oldest demographic and the main individuals who are in positions of power, not only in government, but huge corporations, businesses, you know, uh, uh, most of the facets of society. They are in the boomer generation. So that's why we wanted to bring that up. And we talked about all the failures, why they failed, why you believe what they 
they view the world because of their upbringing and the environment they were in. And that's what we were talking about. Yeah, we, we looked at uh, each generation and the boomer generation was unique because they had kids in multiple generations. Like my brother was born in 71. So he'd be an X like you guys. And the X generation seemed that the boomers were very hard on them. But uh, what you saw with the boomer generation who now currently have the greatest accumulation of wealth, that generation's holding the most wealth in the country. They're, they also seem to be holding uh, the most uh, positions of authority and power. It, specifically, you look in government, you have these boomers in government that are refusing to retire, or refusing to step down from their positions, even CEOs and CFOs of different yeah. companies. Uh, um, you look at uh, the, the difference in raising, say, my brother, they're very hard on him. They spoke in sayings, you know, early bird gets the worm, all these different sayings that they would say, um, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child. And then here, 11 years later, you know, I was born and I'm on the cusp there. I was born in 82. So uh, the... X generations cut off in 1980. Mm. So I'm on the end or the beginning of the millennials end of the X. My parents were very softer, a lot softer on me, but that hard style of discipline. And when you look, I just was having a conversation with a friend of mine who's very liberal and uh, asking me about conservative values and things like that. And I said, you know, it, it, words are important. So, so when you, when you break down someone's ideology, especially politics or religion, um, a lot of people, especially on the left, are married to those ideologies where it becomes part of their identity. So if you were to insult even a political figure like a Kamala Harris or a Hillary Clinton, they take it very personally. Um, it's in even religion, too. But I just broke it down. I said, look, liberalism in modern day liberalism is a very soft, gentle ideology. It's it's getting to, to hear somebody's plight, understanding their background, being uh, soft when it comes to the, the what they're going through in their life. We need to coddle these people, blah, blah, blah. But I said, you know, I look at the military as evidence of what works the best. And of the four major branches, there's six now, including the Coast Guard and Space Force. But of the four major branches, which one historically has had the most success? And it's the Marine Corps. Which one historically has been the most conservative? Everything from civilian attire to the way you talk your grooming standards your fitness standards fitness levels the way they train you in basic we've all seen full metal jacket uh, th the idea of having standards morals values and holding people accountable and then enforcing that in a way that isn't coddling and reinforcing it with some of that like you said negative reinforcement i don't know how many times uh, a drone instructor and even outside of boot camp going into the fleet a sergeant would call you any name, mm -hmm. insult your mother, call you faggot, say, well, you're being a pussy. Let's go. And you would just go, yeah, I am being a pussy. Let's, uh, I got to nut up here and do what I'm supposed to do. And that made for the most efficient branch of military in the history of this country was those kind of standards, those kind of training, that kind of like negative reinforcement. I saw Dominic, you posted on your story, you know, different generations, what they would say. And, and Generation X seems to be the recipient of that discipline. And Generation X, like my brother, like you, Dominic, like Maddie, they seem to have a little bit thicker skin. They seem to not give a fuck uh, about what other people say about them. And, and that's kind of refreshing and nice because today you have to tiptoe and walk on eggshells when it comes to what you say around certain people. The fucking trend is to post yourself crying in a video. Of how should I watch some guy... Scrolling as I was trying to fall asleep last night, some guy puts up on his video. And I I, I, I meant to send it to you guys because I love, I go right to the comment section, right? And thank God there are still some sane people in the comment section. But this guy was sitting there and he had a side profile. So the camera's fucking set up and it's a side profile and he's fighting back tears and he gives into the tears asking why at in his early 30s as a divorced single dad, he's so undateable and he hasn't had a woman in five years. And, of course, the comment section, I was like, bro, this video is why. It's like, holy shit, some woman today crying about her birthday. And I said, well, maybe you shouldn't have another one. But you can't say that, right? Because then if she offs herself, it's your fault and your responsibility. I don't know, man. I just, I, I, I do. I, the Marines, I have to imagine, they've softened up like shit. Uh, you look at military 
and the branches out there, just like law enforcement, they're fat fucking cops and everything that don't take themselves seriously. And we're just a nation that does not have standards anymore. That's my biggest thing. Well, uh, and yeah, go ahead. Dominic, in, in, right now in the uh, Army and Air Force, Navy, I'm not so sure, but they have what's called stress cards. And these recruits can pull out a stress card if the uh, drill instructors, you know, getting two in their face and they, it's almost like a timeout. Like I need a timeout from what you're doing right now. It's, it's really kind of pathetic. People do it's not horrible. have the, they don't understand the value of that shit. And I don't say it for, for sympathy at all. Cause it, it has fucked me up. It has psychologically fucked me up. I am not a good candidate for relationships because if somebody is like loving to me, I'm like, get the fuck away from me, dude. Even though it's like internally, I crave that. It's like, yeah, no, don't touch me. Don't touch me with affection. But if they're like, but if they're if they're a bitch to me, I'm like, oh, I gotta work harder. This is fucking awesome. But that then that's helped me in in, in personal life. Yeah, that's that's built towards very uh, deviant sexual relationships. But in business, it's helped me out a lot because I don't give a shit about other people's opinions and whatnot. But fuck, as a country, we're just we're fucked. Um, I guess that makes us all goyim, right? So I want to know: Can we the video I'm going to play? <laughs> What is a goyim before I play this video? Can you define that, please? It, it means cattle. In, the in word what literally in, means cattle. But in what culture, or language, or ethnicity? So that would be in the Jewish culture. In the Jewish culture, they, they call any non-Jew goyim. Uh, also Gentile. Gentile just means non-Jewish. But whenever they call you goyim, they're referring to you as cattle. It's Hebrew, Dominic, yeah. uh, or singular goy. Uh, it, this designates what a person that's a non-Jew, um, like in Islam, we would be referred, all three of us would be referred to as infidels. infidels yeah. And, you know, Islam, of course we, we in the country, especially post nine 11 people have, uh, you know, Islam's kind of got a bad rap and Muslims in the country weren't treated all that great post nine 11, but to come to find out. And as a Christian that uh, Jews kind of feel the same way about, non-Jews that Muslims would feel about non-Muslims, except actually in Islam and the Quran, they have some kind of flattering things to say about Jesus Christ and Mary, whereas the opposite is true in the Talmud and, and their other uh, teachings like the Kabbalah and the Zohar and all these other books that uh, they don't have a lot of flattering things to say about uh, Jesus Christ or his mother Mary. So, th th again, religion is a, a problem. <laughs> Religion's a problem. I would, it really yeah. is. It's it. I would argue that I would yeah. argue that the Quran, if you actually get into it a little bit, which I haven't, but I've watched other people break it down. The Quran actually offers arguments that prove Jesus is God. They actually, and they, so they, I guess uh, in, in the Quran, and I'm paraphrasing clearly because I'm not going to sit there and uh, what are their, you don't know what their imam is. Oh, shut up. Good shit. Uh, they talk about Mary, Miriam, they call her in the Bible, in the, in the Quran, infinitely more, than um, Muhammad's wife. She's like the most referenced female in the Quran. And then they talk about how like uh, only God can create life. And then the Quran goes on to uh, describe that Jesus took a ball of mud and turned it into a bird. It's like, well, wait, can okay, you just prove this? So there's some stuff in that. But the both religions um, advocate, it seems, again, I'm not that well versed in it, that, uh, well, the Quran, it's like what? You, gotta, you can lie to convert believers and any non-believer should be put to death or whatever. And I'm paraphrasing again, but they have extreme right. dealings with non-believers. Does, does the Jewish religion have the same? Yeah. Well, it just it, like you're saying here in the Quran, um, they, they have different rules set uh, where you can lie to the infidel um, that's okay. Lying to somebody else that's Muslim, that's not okay. Uh, just like in the Talmud, they do say that. Like, lying is wrong. Uh, uh, if it's to another it's Jew. To another Jew. Um, Killing you know, also. Stealing. Stealing's wrong. And murder. Uh, if As long as it's with another Jew. You know, uh, but, you know, we we get on these other religions, you know, and Islam, you can get on the, the harshness of Sharia law and the different, like, if you were to leave the faith, which... That term is called apostasy. If you're apostate, that means you've renounced your faith and you've decided to leave. Well, if you're found guilty of apostasy uh, in Islam sh under Sharia law, the penalty for apostasy is death. Uh, so it, there are some extremes there with with Islam, of course. 
Um, you, you can say the same with Christianity too. You know, the views of Christians are that uh, you're going to hell. You know, everyone's going to hell if you don't accept Jesus Christ. And that message, I don't think that turns people off a, yeah, a lot. I think when sure. yeah. you, you tell people, yeah, you tell people like, oh, you know, somebody who might be gay or someone who might be trans, like you guys are going to hell, you know, have that Westboro Baptist church that stands outside of uh, different, uh, you know, abortion clinics or whatever, and it's, or different rallies or parades and they have signs holding up the say, funerals of military right, right god god hates fags and all this stuff yeah. but uh you know so all three all three religions when you look at it you know how many wars or how many conflicts have been caused because of religious ideology oh, and, and it, it it's awful you ever see kingdom of yeah. heaven ridley scott yeah, film the orlando bloom yeah you ever see the director's cut I have. I, oh, I, I own it. fucking one came out. I was in. Uh, I was stationed overseas. I was watching Okinawa, Japan. Yeah. I, a good flick. One of my favorite movies. Renault, bring me war. That's what I do. Oh, I fucking <laughs> love it. All right, we need, and the reason I bring this up is I, 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 I'm a faith based guy. I believe in Christ. Read the Bible every day. I'm in Samuel now, wondering. How the hell, I don't understand what the hell Saul wanted to kill David for, all this shit. And then I'm looking into going, oh my God, what, did God put a spirit of evil in Saul? Doesn't that, doesn't that kind of, wait, negate that God doesn't cause evil? So it's kind of like, I'm, I go through my own journey reading shit, but I'm not, I don't like the hypocrisy of Christians who do that. We're like, oh, you're sucking cock, you're going to hell. The difference that it seems um, between Christianity and Islam is that, they're not going to send you there, meaning that Christians will just, you know, we're going to do the passive-aggressive bullshit of, oh, I pray for you, brother. I love you, brother. Like, you get in that online argument, and, you know, Scott says something or Matt says something. I go, oh, you know, but I love you, brother. I'll be praying for you. I literally want to punch people in the fucking throat when they say that. Because I'm like, dude, I don't want your prayers. You don't know me. You should not love me. I'm a filthy, disgusting human fucking being. You're lying if you say that. You misunderstand what the context of it is. All this shit. But with Muslims, if like I was, if I was a, a practicing Islam, it seems like I had full permission to cut somebody's head off if they didn't believe or if they practiced different. I want to know if we're leading down the same path with what the Jewish religion is. So if if they're going to look at us as cattle, uh, I want to hear what they have to say because you know I I am. I I live in a, in a liberal area. I've got an extremely diverse neighborhood. We all get along with each other, but we really don't know who our neighbors are. And when shit hits the fan, if you know the the third world America comes here and you got a loaf of bread and I need to eat, I'm gonna steal it. I'm gonna fucking knock you out and take it. And you can you cannot stop me. But uh, I want to know what are my right. scheming neighbors who maybe we don't uh, align on the same value of, of faith. What are they thinking of me? And uh, um, we're going to play this together and watch this and hear what uh, the old uh, Jewish people have to say about us um, Gentile goyim cows, if you will. But this is now as clear as day. That world history is coming down to the two powers, the Western world against Ishmael. There's 70 nations. 70 nations are really 35 and 35 and 35 of them are controlled by what's called Edoim, the Western world, what many consider America. And 35 are controlled by Yishmael, the Arab Muslim world. And this is our tradition that the two main Umay Sa'ilam are Esav and Yishmael, Edom and Yishmael. These are the only two nations that will exist until Mashiach comes. Rome and Persia. Who's going to be the last man standing? Esav or Yishmael? By the way, my message to both of them is we wish both of them tremendous hatzlacha. They should wipe each other out. No, none of them should be standing. Both sides should mamish be matzliach as much as possible. We wish both sides tremendous, tremendous hatzlacha in their avoida of wiping out the other party. But this is now as clear as day. <laughs> That's pretty peaceful. <laughs> I, on some end of it, hey, I'm okay with his... Uh, his his taking that hard stance and like, I hope you fuckers wipe each other out. But the other side of it, that's, I think that's the difference between America and some of these other religions. And, and a lot of times I get caught up in people saying you're a lukewarm Christian, right? And, and Christians, again, I don't think we have the path to, um, I, I, 
man, how do I put this? When people accuse somebody of being a lukewarm Christian, it's always because they're in line with their their ways of practicing faith, right? You can't tell me I'm a lukewarm Christian when I know exactly what my faith is. But these people, there are no difference between the radical Islamic terrorists that I think. They're, they're, and when you have this ideology that your, your upbringing bases you on, you are in a brainwashed cult. So... I take people like this very seriously. Uh, Maddie, can you kind of, I mean, for the most part, translate what he was talking about? What What's the takeaway we should get from there? Well, first, I want to say that this isn't the only rabbi that says this. There's multiple rabbis that say this. Um, I'm talking lead rabbis who um, are even advisors to the prime minister all throughout history. This is in their holy book, right? They need to build the third temple, which is on the on that wall to where there's a mosque, the al Ask Mosque. And in order for that third temple to be built to where the Mashiach comes, they need to tear down that mosque and build the third temple there. And that's when their Mashiach will come, whenever with the war he's talking about is a Gog-Magog war, uh, which is kind of like East versus West, or, you know, he says Ishmael, which is the, the uh, Arabs versus um, the I, West. I can break down the history of that. Yeah, he, he'll be able to break down the history of that, but... This is what they this is what they want. They've they've said this for decades. This is what they've always believed in their holy books. And what they're trying to do is usher it in. And I can show you I, I can send multiple videos of rabbis even claiming that they believe Donald Trump will be the one to usher in the building of the third temple, to usher in this war. Um they even have a coin with his face on it. They have made Israel had made a coin with Donald Trump's face on it. I believe there's a menorah on the other side. They worship this guy, and some rabbis even likened him to uh, King David. Um, they believe he's going to usher in the building of the third, third temple to where their Mashiach, which is their Messiah, that's their version of their Messiah, to come. And when that comes. Basically, the all the Gentile goyim, all the races will be wiped out. Except there, there'll still be some left. But it, it says in their holy book that each Jew will have a thousand Gentile slaves at the end of this. Eventually, they'll all have any any Jew that's uh, uh, still living uh, and remaining will have a thousand Gentile slaves. Um, that's what they believe. So what they do is. They are now. I'm not saying I'm not saying I believe in any of this stuff. Like any religious, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, prophecies. But what I'm saying is, they believe it. They truly believe it, and they're trying to usher it in by force. And the difference here is Dominic between Islam and Arabs and Judaism and Israeli Jews is that Islam does not have a stranglehold on our government. And a lot of discourse in America, Israel does. They're the ones who get all the money. Their APAC funds all of our uh, politicians. Okay, now they do have CARE, which is a, the Council of America Islamic Relations, but there's no country like the uh, um, with the America Israeli Public Affairs Committee. It's a specific one country. And they are the only ones who do not have to register as a foreign agent. They're the ones who give all the money to politicians, governors, representatives, senators, uh, um, uh, presidents. Donald Trump's number one financier in 2016 was Sheldon Adelson. He's a Jewish billionaire casino magnate. He passed away. Now Donald Trump, this year, his number one financier okay, is Miriam Adelson, the widow of Sheldon Adelson, $100 million from her alone. Not to mention that they can, they own, as we already said, the mass majority, the bulk of all the mainstream media companies and corporations. You know, they control the, the bulk of the pharmaceutical companies. COVID, you know, they made all this money, Pfizer and Moderna specifically. Moderna owned by Stephen Bansell, another Jewish individual, and then Pfizer's owned by Andrew Borla another Jewish individual. They made most money during the COVID Operation Warp Speed, which was the welfare given billions of dollars to these pharmaceutical companies to create the vaccine, which Donald Trump ushered in uh, um, through Operation Warp Speed. Now, what, what, what Scotty's going to do here, he's going to break down the religious aspect of the Gog-Magog war 
and to usher in the Mashiach. And this is what, again, this is what Judaism believes. Go ahead. Yeah, well, the history of this, Dominic, and you'll be familiar with some of these stories, is, you know, one of their holy books that uh, they, that, you know, hold dear is the Torah, which is the Old Testament for Christians. Mm. And uh, the Old Testament, there's 39 books in the Old Testament. And the first the first five are, are really the ones that focus on this subject, uh, specifically the book of Genesis. Now, these religions, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, they all stem from Abraham in the Bible. That's why all three are called the Abrahamic religions. Um, now, Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael was the firstborn. He's the older son. Isaac is the younger son. Ishmael was born from the, the handmaiden or slave of Sarah. Sarah was barren mm. and couldn't produce, a chi- couldn't produce a child. So she gave Abraham her slave or her handmaiden. And her name was Hagar. So Ishmael is the son of Hagar. And Ishmael's descendants are those today in the Arab world that are mostly Islamic. Um, now, Isaac was the younger, and he was actually the son of Sarah. Now, it says in there, and you, it's a recurring theme, that the older will serve the younger. That is something that's said multiple times throughout that Old Testament. And here, Isaac, he has two sons. The firstborn is Esau. Esau, his descendants, are what you would look at is uh, Rome um, or the Europeans. Uh, Ishmael or, or Isaac's uh, firstborn son, Esau, the description of him in the Bible, and, and we talk about obtaining Isaac's blessings, um, Isaac was going blind towards the end and couldn't see, so he would feel Esau, uh, and it says in the Bible that Esau had like coarse red hair. So you see a lot of the descendants mm. that make sense when you think about descendants was, in Europe. Uh, was he the Esau's, one that was considered, uh, was he the one who the Bible describes as being absolutely worthless? Esau? I don't, one no, of them, I don't believe so. Well, the reason I'm asking is because it, it's, I, what we're seeing is this branching out of covering the globe. And I know one of them was described in the Bible as being worthless. Like God says he's worthless. I have to wonder if that kind of points out to the... Hmm. The 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 the, the, the but, us not us goyim are worthless in the Jews' eyes. You might be right out. on that, I, and I'll when it goes when we go back and forth, I'll, I'll look into that a little bit deeper. But so he, again, Esau is the firstborn to Isaac, and then uh, of course Jacob is the second born. And uh, again, it keeps saying the older will serve the younger. Uh, Jacob, the descendants of Jacob, the descendants of Isaac, the, those are today the what. The modern day Jew would, would claim and say that we're descendants, but the Jews today, I think the percentages uh, in Israel that the majority of the Jews living in Israel are, are they're called Ashkenazi, yes, Ashkenazi Jews. Which yeah, really, uh, they're not even Hebrew; their European. lineage are European. That's where when we break down the Bolshevik Revolution, which is you know overthrowing Nicholas uh, the Tsar yeah. in, in uh, the Soviet Union, yeah. th- that was uh, that was happening there and. Um, those Bolsheviks were these Ashkenazi Jews that overthrew the Tsar in Russia. And then, of course, uh, Vladimir Lenin, Joseph Stalin, they uh, set up the Soviet Union, which the history there with communism and Judaism, are, they're closely linked. Uh, but here, what, the, what he's saying here, this rabbi and what he's prophesying is that you know, the descendants of Esau and the descendants of Ishmael are going to kill each other. Mm. And... Um, uh, 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 that's the doing pretty much. They're doing the work for them, meaning they're just going to wipe each other out. And then at the end of the day, uh, they will serve, uh, you know, the, the goyim will, will, will serve. They actually say that it's an honor for us to serve them. That we were born to be their slaves. And, and that's what they believe that the, the prophecy there with the Gog and Magog war, you can find a lot of those end time prophecies uh, not just in Revelation, even though uh, obviously people focus on the book of Red- Revelation in, in the New Testament. It's the very last book of the Bible in the King James Bible. But you have uh, in the book of Daniel, there's a lot of end time prophecy there, as well as Ezekiel. And it talks about a war where uh, all these countries, Gog, Magog, and people that focus on these end time prophecies uh, in Christianity even, They'll say, you know, that they're describing, you know, what is modern day Russia or what's China 
uh, and then they'll come and attack Israel and they'll be defeated. And they, they say that the blood will be so high that it will touch the horse's bridle mm. in this conflict. So, um, yeah, and a lot well, of these two, describe, a lot of the things that Matt suck. They describe uh, ushering in the Antichrist, though, building the temple, bringing in their Messiah. That's what we see as the Antichrist coming in. That's and an isn't it amazing? Point, That's Dominic. right. Now, Dude, it is. Well, isn't it amazing how what Matt said, if you really boil down to it, if I'm going to defend Christianity for a second, pick the three of them, right? Is uh, Islam, you do this, right? You do these works, you're going to get uh, 72 virgins. Virgins. You uh, Jews, whatever their thing is, if they're good enough, they're going to get 1,000 slaves, right? Then there's Christianity. You can't do any works. You have to accept the gift, and you'll receive peace. It's like, so the other two... It's like, yeah, we're going to subjugate humans. And uh, the third one is like, no, just, you know, accept the gift and have peace. It's like, and everyone go along. It's like, holy shit. Yeah, that is, yeah. That is, that, that, that is a stark difference there between the, the three religions. I mean, you can argue that of, of the three, like you were saying, Christians, um, you could describe them as being the weakest, the softest, the frailest, because, you know, there's some verses in the New Testament that have really, I think, done more harm than good. When you talk about turning the other cheek, the meek will inherit the earth. And then you have to remind people that, uh, you know, our Savior, Jesus Christ, did make uh, a whip and went into uh, the yeah. temple where the money, where the money lenders were. I'm and then, of that. course, uh, um, Luke chapter 22, 36, I believe is the verse. Christ instructs his disciples. He says, if you have a cloak, if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and get a sword. So yeah. he's uh, advocating for yeah, uh, I, open I, carry there. I, I, <laughs> oh, that, that I agree with. That I agree with. What I can't stand is the Christians who leverage that whole, well, like I, I'm not a big fan of uh, the people who go into Walmart, right? They, they walk into Walmart and uh, there's the, the self-checkout line and they're at the door while the whole place is full. Uh, uh, Attention, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to have your attention for five seconds. Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Accept Yeshua, your God and Savior. He it's like, shut the fuck up. These are people who, you know, the, the psychotic people who say how much they love their cats is, is what the parallel is of that. I can't stand people like that. And then when you criticize them going, that's not the way, man. Well, Jesus commanded us to be bold. He went into the temple with reeds and he whipped people. Yeah, because he's God. He could do whatever the fuck he wants. He didn't command us to do that. And then that every time, every time you go back to the, you know, he did give us a new commandment where he literally says, uh, and a new commandment I give you, to love one another as I've loved you. Yeah, but we're called to judge. That's where I step away from Christians like crazy because of their unbelievable hypocrisy. Because it seems like, dude, if you if you want to be like Islam and, and throw down and cut some throats, go fucking do it. Don't be a pussy. Well, they're well, pussies. Well, <laughs> well, Dominic, just just to you know, play devil's advocate here. Jews I mean, advocate th what? Th this is the history. This this is the history of um, this is the history of America. Yeah, we we did. They they were Christians. Every single one of the founding fathers, except for Thomas Paine, was a Christian. They used violence in order to establish a free America. And what were we you told? Know, again, it, we are well. My point is, we don't have to even use Christian self defense and preservation of one's people, one's culture, one's way of life in order to fight for freedom. You must use violence. The history of the world, all over the globe, has been that. And my point is, if if somebody wants to use a Bible verse in order to explain that reality and that fact, I personally don't have a problem with it. Now, I do get what you're saying. However, it's still a universal absolute in order to use violence. Now, I'm not saying you use violence as evil, but if you want to defeat evil, you know, not to promote evil. Yes, violence is necessary. So this is why police officers have tasers, pepper spray, firearms, billy clubs. They must use violence to enforce, you know, we'll say legitimate laws. They do the same with illegitimate laws, unconstitutional laws. But my point is self-defense is, I think, a great, it's a universal absolute. And if somebody, in my opinion, it's my opinion, if somebody wants to use these phrases from the Bible to kind of ensure people that it is right, it is righteous fury, righteous indignation, I personally don't have a problem with that. That's yeah, just that's, me. Well, Dominic, that, I think well, I, I want to sit. I want to interrupt you for one second. Where you're right on that is everything you just said. 
where the problem is, is that Christians don't do it for that purpose. They do it for their self pontification of my faith. I'm, I'm exuding my faith more than yours. I'm better at you at worshiping. Oh, okay. well, yeah. That's where they do it that I have right, a yeah. okay. problem with. Scott, okay. Go ahead. Well, D- D- Dominic, the book that you're reading currently right now is First Samuel, and yeah. it's actually one of my favorite books in the Bible. And and just as a piece of literature, not as even a religious book, it's my favorite because uh, just even in the beginning, when you talk about Eli was the priest and Hannah, uh, who could, was barren, he couldn't have kids, and then she went up to the the, the, the temple or the, the you know the church or whatever you want to call it, and she prayed to God and said, "If you." you let me have a child for my husband. I'll dedicate him to the, to the church and I'll give him to the church. And that's the child was Samuel. The Samuel became the first uh, priest of, of uh, Israel or, or priest of Israel. And then they clamored for a King. And then uh, of course, Samuel's kind of response there was, it's a very interesting book. It's a great book because even in there, it, t- it talks about Saul going to a median, uh, it, conjuring up the spirit of Samuel. Samuel's very upset that they did this. Uh, and of course, David, when we talk about the use of violence uh, for self-defense, and righteous indignation, righteous fury, things, things like that. Uh, Matt always quotes, and I do too, that, you know, at, at one point, even David had to pick up stones here mm-hmm. that, you know, that it's just, hey, there was no praying your way out of this 10 foot giant. You know, he had to defend his land and what he loved. And he picked up those five smooth stones, only needed one. And then when, when you look at first Samuel it describes the aftermath, when he killed Goliath, do you know what he did, Matt? Chopped his head off. He chopped his head off. David was a savage. David killed this giant. With he was a young sword. boy. He was a shepherd boy. He went up after he slayed the giant. The giant fell. It said he cut. He went up and used Goliath's sword and cut his head off. That's a savage move. He was going to go after big, his brothers, too. How big was that sword compared to David as well, too? I love the, the visuals the in there the where, you see, where you see Samuel, <laughs> or is it Saul? It's, it talks about him trying to... Uh, to throw a spear into David and how many times he miss him and hit a wall. It's like, damn, that's fucking, you're sitting in your throne room, pick up a spear, chuck it at a guy, sticks in a wall. I gotta get out of here, dude. Yeah, fuck out of here. <laughs> and, and it's, it says too in Samuel, David had multiple chances to kill Saul. Yeah. And he didn't, you know? Yeah. Anyways, it's a great book. Oh, people, you know, the that, clear uh, answer is let's go out and kill people. Uh, for entertainment purposes. Only. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't Mike know. Is and, right. Might is right. I, I get that. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm one of those good times created soft men to where so far the American experiment seemed to be working pretty decently. I have friends who are Muslim. I have friends who are atheists. I have friends who are LGBTQ. I don't give a fuck, man. Just stay out of my business, this and that. And it, it seems like if we're going to say America, well, not if we're going to say America was based on uh, founded on freedom of uh, ex- expressing your religion. I'm sure, Matt, there's a very big detail I'm missing in this. And we broke away from the King of England for that reason. That's what we at least were taught. It seems, are we coming up on a place again now where maybe America's so fucked up because people keep going, it's a Christian nation. It's a Christian. We have to get back to those values. Do we have to kind of crack the religious structured whip and start stacking ass again and go, man, we are worse than Sodom and Gomorrah, and maybe it's time to reinstitute structured religion to get people back in line because we've just abused the shit out of it? Well, throughout, again, this is a pretty exclusive of the European history. Now, we can go back to the, um, the Roman Empire, now, the Roman Empire, they were a, a monotheist um, group, right? They believed in Jupiter, you know, Saturn. They believed in all these gods, you know, equivalent to Zeus, which is the Greek names for the same gods. And they had a very successful, long-lasting, structured uh, government and structured system, a, a great civilization, building aqueducts and a Colosseum and, and the, the Via Appia, the roadways. I mean, these... The, the the Roman Empire was so far ahead of its time. Same thing with the Greeks. They were very structured. And even our government is based off of a, re, it's a republic. And that's, that's the same thing that they had. They had republic. They had city states. We have states. You know, in Greece, uh, you had Sparta, you know, a- Athens. You had uh, Sardinia. Um, you had all these city states, Thessalonia. You had city states, but it was still the Greek Empire. And that's kind of what we 
we've, we formed our country, the United States, off of. They turned the colonies into states, kind of like the Greeks did. And that's what we're kind of set up. Uh, very uh, a portion of our government is set up that way and again this wasn't a christian empire the roman empire then got converted into the holy roman empire which was under emperor constantine and, and you can look this up but i believe it was about 315 ad constantine said no nope, christianity is now our Religion. He did it, but so by decree or by edict. And about 400 AD, the entire Roman Empire, holistically speaking, was con- converted into Christianity. But then they got weaker, and all of a sudden, what happened? The Roman Empire fell. Right. So you can even make the you can make the argument that Christianity brought the greatest empire down, or at least played a role in bringing it down. Now that being said. You, after the fact, you had all these countries that were now Christian, and they still were able to thrive and succeed. They were great empires. You had all these countries, Spain, Portugal, Italy, all Christian, even Poland, right? Germany. Everyone was Christian at the time. There was all Catholic or Christian. Well, even today, look at Poland and Romania. Right. They're mostly Christian. But they were still strong countries. They were always wars. You had the, 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 you know, the Punic Wars and the Napoleonic Wars. You had all these wars go on. However... The greatest evil, Dominic, that had ever been created in any country was communism. Mm. Communism was started by atheists. However, 90% of the atheists or 90% of the communists that implemented communism for the first time in Russia, when they overthrew the czar, who was Catholic, they were all Jews, 90% of them. This is not even an arguable, debatable subject. This is everyone already agrees with this. Even Dennis Prager, who runs Prager University, he's Jewish. He agrees to this. Even uh, uh, J- Jordan Peterson, okay? Even Winston Churchill in 1920, this is the year after World War ended, World War I ended, after the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917, Winston Churchill wrote a full page article on page five of the Sunday Evening Herald on February 8th, 1920, saying Bolshevism versus Zionism, the the, the struggle for the Jewish soul, because he knew that all of the Bolsheviks, 90% of them, were Jewish. They're the ones who created the evil of communism, which infected almost all of Europe. You have to understand, after that happened, you had what was called the common turn. The common turn was the communist international. They went over to all, they tried to overthrow internally all these countries, and they did so successfully for a little while. Hungary was overthrown by the communists run by Bela Kuhn. Bela Kuhn was a Jew, atheist, Bolshevik, communist Jew. You had them do it over in Spain. This is why the Spanish Civil War happened. It was the communists versus the fascists. The fascists were nationalists. They were all Christian. They were about their own country. They were anti-communists. Okay, this is what fascism was. It was a fascism was created as a movement to counter communism. And all these countries that fought communism were Christians. Over in Russia, they burnt the churches to the ground. They killed priests, put them in the gulag. You were not allowed to practice Christianity. But they let all of the synagogues stand, and even Lenin and Stalin both passed anti-Semitism laws, the first ones in existence, was in Bolshevik communist Russia, because they knew that all of it was created by uh, Jews and even financed by Jewish capitalists over in America namely Jacob Schiff and Max Warburg from Kuhnlo Bank, as well as other uh, Jew fi- Jewish financiers in other countries that were directly subsidiaries from the Rothschild banking institutions. So the entire creation of the greatest evil to ever exist was a Jewish creation. However, they were atheistic Jews. Go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, real quick, Dominic, and um, I'll hand this over, but in 19, uh, January 10, 1963, it was a Thursday in the House of Representatives, they read uh, a lot, allowed all these different goals of communists. And like Matt said, they wanted to take over from within. Now, I'm just going to read a couple here of the communist goals to take over America from within. Uh, and you tell me how far along you know, we think we are here. All right. 
So uh, just a couple here. Uh, resist any attempt to outlaw the Communist Party. Uh, do away with loyalty oaths, like, for instance, the Pledge of Allegiance, things like that. Capture one or both of the political parties in the United States. Use uh, technical decisions of the courts to weaken basic American institutions by claiming their activities to be to violate civil rights. The civil rights movement was a big part of kind of weakening things. Uh, Get control of the schools, use them as transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda, soften the curriculum, get control of the teachers association, put the party line in textbooks, gain control of student newspapers, use student riots to uh, foment public protests against programs or organizations which are under communist attack, infiltrate the press, get control of book review assignments, uh, editorial writing, policymaking positions, gain control of key positions in radio, TV, motion pictures, uh, continue to discredit American culture by degrading all forms of artistic expression. An American communist cell was told to eliminate all good sculptures and parks and buildings and substitute shapeless and awkward and meaningless forms. Tucker Carlson's talked about this multiple times, how art today, even structures, uh, when you're oh, looking at yeah, um, buildings, yeah. buildings, right. Uh, Uh, eliminate laws governing uh, obscenity and calling it censorship and a violation of free speech, free press, break down cultural standards, morality by promoting pornography, obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radios, TV, present homosexuality, degeneracy and promiscuity as normal, natural and healthy, infiltrate churches and replace revealed religion with social religion, discredit the Bible and emphasize the need for intellectual maturity, which does not need a religious crutch. But blah, 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 blah. That's that's just a list of anti-Semitic comments. It's hard to be focused when you're confused. (laughs) When you when you have a free for all, it you just described Pleasure Island in uh, uh, Pinocchio, where the boys go there, do whatever the fuck you want, and then turn into donkeys and be sold into slavery. That's all that it's. What you just described was pretty much do whatever the fuck you want, dumb it down, dull your senses with with uh, what is it called when you, when you build a tolerance to something and then you need more, you can never get that. Like your resistance to something is gone. It, yeah. it, it's it's it desensitization, right? You just and you just you're yeah. going to be Jonesing for your next thing. This is just this is news that just came out. Uh, it's kind of relevant for the conversation. Uh, the United States on Tuesday approved the sale of twenty billion dollars in fighter jets and other military equipment to Israel as it uh, prosecutes uh, a ten month old war in the Gaza Strip. Although the Pentagon said deliveries would not begin for years. Um, okay. I, I, for one, I don't care who it is. I'm tired. You brought up a good point last week where you talked about not having insurance. I haven't had health insurance since 2016. When I, I, and I just fucking, I have the same for me. The same for me. Can't. And I laughed, I laughed in the fucking face of people. Um, when that Obamacare came up and they're like, oh, you have to have health insurance. Go fuck you, dude. Because I didn't have it before then, but then I went back to work and I had it. But I'm like, I don't care. Can't happen to me. You know, if I if I die of a massive grabber, I don't give a shit all this stuff. I just, But it blows me away that here's another $20 billion for a war I couldn't give a fuck less about. When, when it comes down to it, yep. I'm at this position to where... I want an answer on what there is to do, and I want a, a tangible answer a, as a person who needs something to fucking happen. What I mean by that is, you know, I could say all day long, hey, man, uh, I don't give a shit what happens with Israel and, Ga- Israel and Gaza. And then Matt comes along and says, no, well, you should, because as you can see here, your money's going there. Okay, well, voting doesn't work. So yep. what's the... Uh, I, I know what I want the solution to be, but then the FBI is going to come knocking on your door. Yep. I'm fucking yep. tired of this, man. Well, well it, it's not what you want it to be. That That's just what it is. Mm. And unfortunately, um, you do not have enough Americans to not only do it and not only support doing it, but to even talk about doing it. Because we live in a world now where you will go to prison, be arrested for speaking. And that scares most people. Ever- I push this stuff. And I, again, I, I have to, I have no choice. I have, I cannot live my life in fear. I can't, mm-hmm. I will never do that ever again. I did it before in certain things. I will never fucking do it again. I'm going to keep saying the truth because the whole fucking reason this country is in the shithole that it's in and all these things are happening is because no one's fucking saying the truth. Voting, to your point, Dominic, you said voting won't fix it. You are correct. It won't fix it. Well, there's no evidence to say it will. Yeah. Like you look at the last century. What has anything changed? Have things gotten better? Have things gotten the worse? But, but you don't have enough people. 
to support that whole idea because they are still brainwashed into the biggest psyop that ballot casting will help. And Carlin said it. It's the illusion of choice. You have the illusion of choice. Do you ever notice how it's always uh, every bad guy is the one who has it right? Darth Vader runs an empire. And it's structured, and you got fucking food <laughs> and and air conditioned fucking units on a, on a on a space station. And what do the rebels do? They're fucking eating whatever alien deer that is with Ewoks. Look at The Walking Dead. <laughs> I've said this for fucking years. The Walking Dead is a great show that talks about yeah. uh, what the world does when it goes to shit. Right? Look, at, not, it's not about zombies. It's about how people uh, 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 continue. Look at every bad guy on The Walking Dead. The governor, Negan. Yeah. They had the most fucking structure, and their communities thrived. But because they used violence to keep people in line, that they were the bad right. guys. So do you? they want Americans brainwashed to think that if you, you, if you smell like patchouli and you're in an open relationship and live in a tent in the woods, that's fucking America, dude. Get your flip-flops out. Fucking get your crystals, put them on your tits, and let's all dance in the sun. Yeah. Fuck you. I would rather yeah. take orders from somebody who said, I know how to grow crops. You don't. Guess what you're going to do? What am I going to do? You're going to fucking go harvest them. Motherfucker, as long as I get to eat, I don't give a shit. Give me a purpose. I'm tired of people yeah. who have no, who just don't understand that you need structure. And sometimes that structure requires a hand cracking that fucking whip. One of my favorite takes that you have, Dominic, is actually your take from A Few Good Men. That You, you said that now, you're looking back at things, the good guy of that movie was Colonel Nathan Jessup. That he was actually the one percent. that uh, was the good guy. Yeah. And who I was like trying it. to And I tell you it. what, the more and more I watch these movies, I find out that Bane was not the villain in yeah. Batman. <laughs> and uh, oh. but your Bill in uh, Gangs in New York wasn't really a bad guy. Do you look at you <laughs> look, but, fucking A Few Good Men, which kills me. Absolutely kills me. Few Good Men and uh, uh, The American President. Great movies. Well, they're both directed by Rob fucking Reiner. Liberal fucking cunt, right? Colonel Nathan Jessup, he has, he has the fucking speech. He has dad too. Fuck. He has the speech in there. I would rather just have you say thank you and go on your merry way unless you're going to pick up a weapon, all this shit. He's right. You know, when it comes down to war, I'll never tell a soldier how to fight because I do believe that unless you're like the Roman Empire where you just wipe out every man, woman, and child and take their fucking cattle and land, you didn't win the war. You left people who are going to grow up and attack you. But here we are in America. You got Caffey. He's the good guy, right? In his faggoty white uniform and his Harvard mouth. <laughs> and he's going to... It's like, no, that's the entitled prick who doesn't understand what it actually takes. The hard... Shit that it actually takes to keep a nation safe. So I fucking, I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, Colonel Nathan Jessup, played by Jack Nicholson. He was the hero of that film. Yeah, yeah he says it in there. It's perfectly, it's well said. Uh, he plays that character, a colonel, to perfection. And he says, what, what would you, any of you know about running an infantry battalion? And he's right. The answer is that everybody in that room was a pogue. That's a, a, a personnel other than grunt. That's what it stands for, Pogue, meaning they have no idea what it's like to be up at 4 a.m. or be in a field for 30 days at a time not showering or, or having to ration out MREs or whatever the case may be, with sleep deprived, uh, uh, dehydrated, yeah, hungry. They have no And they have no idea what it takes to, to be leaders of those men that are doing that. So, so when he says, the truth is, you want me on that wall, you need me on that wall, he's absolutely correct. Because nobody in that room, including the, the judge, the colonel that was a judge there, a, a, anybody, they have no idea. You, the captain uh, the Weinberg. Play. Yeah, another Jew name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I love it, man. That was one of the best takes, dude. You said that. You told me that take, I it, think, on the first, first podcast dude, we ever did. I was like, oh, my away. God, that's amazing. It, yeah, it blows me away. The young man I was when that came out, what, 90, well, mid-90s. And uh, you're like, yeah, fighting for whatever. And it's like... I, okay, you look at the, the whole movie was about a weak fucking pussy who was killed because he couldn't fucking keep up in line in an organization that's sole purpose is to defend our freedom. And we have that everywhere. I just did a podcast with somebody today talking about law enforcement, but how many people are passed through the cracks? 
because the department will spend forty grand on training him. We got to put him through. We gotta, those are standards. It comes back to standards. We have no fucking standards. It, we have no concept of survival of the fittest. No concept of pressure testing, and it all should boil down to vote for fucking Kamala Harris because she's a black woman and you're not. And that's what fucking America. I hate this fucking. We need an all out war. You sir. I'm sorry, what? You circled around pretty nice where we started the podcast. <laughs> where we ended. That was pretty nice, Tom. I don't know if you planned that, but that was pretty good. I'm a or or I'm you a vote for Donald Trump because he he sticks it to the Dems and um, says mean things about them. Yeah, you know, I, so, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, again, it's, I'm it's, not disagreeing. Two Tommy. sides of the same point. Oh, yeah. It's, two sides of the same point. Oh, it's I, just as bad. It, it, I could actually make the argument that the Republicans are worse because they're the ones who are supposed to they at least claim to champion constitutional rights and freedom they're the ones who who claim to um be no, the not. uh champions of, of freedom and they're not they're not at they're, least they're the not. left liberals i know they, they're communists they and they don't claim worst. any of that they are the worst yeah. one because you have like a perfect example of ted cruz when that bag of shit yep. uh, sheila jackson lee passed away who was one of the most vile fucking human beings on their side what do you have ted cruz oh Sorry to hear the passing of my colleague, uh, Sheila. Your colleague? You defend that cunt who spoke against your fucking supporters and voters, and this is how you you celebrate her? Yeah, fuck them both. The 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 Republicans are they're they're fucking pussy cunts. I can't stand any of them. I really can't. So I'm hoping, Putin, if you're listening, please, <laughs> would you push that fucking button? I can if if I got to survive a nuclear holocaust, man, I'll eat roaches and fuck blow up dolls that i find left over guys burn pit podcast <laughs> monday 4 p.m eastern check them out uh these are the burn pit podcast boys love having them on go do something awesome for somebody today and if you can't help them just don't fucking hurt them see you guys tomorrow